Google Home suck now, and it's honestly a shame because they used to be leading it in the industry. But now I find that I don't enjoy using my Google Home as much as I once did. Now the reason for this is recently I've been coming across a lot of issues where my Google Home just freezes, stops, lags, doesn't work, and just decides that it simply doesn't want to be my assistant. Now sometimes I do think that I find Google, because honestly, half the time she isn't even an assistant, because she doesn't actually respond to what I say, and she doesn't actually listen to what I say, and she'll think it, I'm saying something else. Now honestly, this isn't great, and it's gone very downhill since smart assistants came out. Now I've noticed this with a lot of smart assistants. They were great when they first came out, and then too many features started to get added, and screens started to get added, and operating systems need to be made. Now I started off with the Google Home Mini, when it was actually called the Google Home Mini. And I absolutely loved it. It was great, you know, I could listen to music, I could ask it things, and it wasn't as expensive as people thought. Now honestly, this has really, really gone downhill ever since, and I've been struggling to understand why. Now, I think this is mainly because Google's quality control has gone downhill when it comes to Google Homes. Now, what I mean by this is the software team have been pumping so much features into these Google Homes and made the software so unique that when you try and go around the UI, everything's a bit laggy, everything's a bit slow, everything doesn't work as well. And this never used to be like this. Google used to have the amazing software on their screen devices. And ever since they swapped the iOS around and made things slightly different and made it more, you know, optimized for Google Home, it's really gone downhill. It's really changed. It's really made me think, you know what? I might switch to Apple's HomePod. Now, I've been thinking about doing this for a long time and I really do want to do it. So if you do think I should do it, comment down below and tell me if you've got a Google Home or a HomePod Mini and I would definitely decide which one I want going based off the comments. So. First things first, when I try and use my automations, which I have a lot of, I let it turn on my lights, turn off my lights, you know, control my Xbox, control my TV. It works, but very rarely. Now, this has obviously been a very big issue because I run all of my things off Google Home. It runs all off the Google's ecosystem. And I really didn't used to enjoy using Google's home system. But now, with all of these changes and with all the bugs and the laggy UI, it makes it very difficult for me to control my smart home with Google. So it has mean that I've had to be using the apps that default come with the LED strips, come with my light bars, come with the Xbox, you know, come with the TV as well. Whereas before I could do it all in one app, I could do it all seamlessly and it would all just work. Whereas now things aren't really like that. It tends to be the case of, you know, I'll ask Google to do something and she'll protest what I've said, but then just do nothing about it. Or she'll protest what I've said and then three minutes later, my light will just randomly come on. Or she'll say, sorry, there was a glitch. Now, a lot of this happens quite often and it is a glitch. It's one too many glitches. I don't want to be having a glitch every time I use my Google Home. That's not why I bought it. I paid like £130 for this device, you need to be working. You are an expensive product. You're more expensive than, you know, Apple's HomePod, and people thought that was expensive at the time. It is absolutely ridiculous how expensive these things have gotten, especially with the, you know, degradation in quality. Now, would I say to you, don't buy a Google Home? Now, no, I wouldn't say that. I'd just say, don't buy a Google Home with a screen. I'd say, stick to one that's just a speaker, one that's small, one that's cheap, one that's 42 pounds, a second-hand one. Something that's nothing too expensive because they're just not worth it. They're just not the same as they used to be. With things like ChatGPT, you know, literally on our, our doorstep, it makes things a lot easier now to use ChatGPT. You can get a better conversation out of ChatGPT. You know, things like that definitely work a lot better now than these smart assistants, mainly just because they don't have the knowledge, they don't have, you know, the database that ChatGPT has been given. Now, Google could put its bard into Google, which would make it a lot, lot better. It would mean that things re re react a lot quicker, you know, more natural voice, you know, seamless, seamless interactions, more, you know, casual conversations. Whereas with Google now, it feels like we're very much in a generation behind. You know, we're not in the generation of, you know, bleeding out technology anymore, where this is, you know, the best AI is. It's really not like that anymore. And it is a shame to see that, you know, these devices used to be so high-end, they used to work so well. And it's all gone downhill because of lack of software and just lack of hardware, to be honest, because the hardware inside of that Google Home is nowhere near powerful enough to run the software. I think for most new Google Homes, you can even still swipe down, it still lags, it lags all over the shop. And it's just sad to see that, you know, a company that once had such a good product, such a unique product for its time, just go downhill. 
definitely showed that you know things have been changing. AI has come a long way and we expect more out of our devices. Now, if we look on the Google phones, Google runs really well because it's run by powerful hardware. You know, the Google Pixel phones have some of the best Google interactions ever. You know, I used to have a Google Pixel phone and I absolutely loved the fact that I could have Google right on the doorstep. And they, you know, they built their chips to work really, really well with Google. You know, if we didn't have the Google phones to compare these two, well, I think a lot of people would say that Google Assistant is bad in a lot of ways because the hardware just can't keep up with the software. Now, I don't know if this is to do with, you know, Google needs to get to the database quicker and, you know, the, pro the chips just can't process it as well. But I am in the room with the internet. You know, I have hot, I literally have disks in every room where, you know, all these Google Homes are. And it doesn't make sense that sometimes it can be slow, sometimes it can be quick, sometimes it will respond well. There needs to be more local commands on there. I think they need to have, you know, the light commands. They need to be local. It's in your local network, not in a, you know, a cloud service. We need to have a lot more commands becoming local. Now, if this did become the case, it would mean that commands would react a lot quicker and it would rely on the hardware, not so much the software and going on the database. It's definitely better that we have more commands locally than online, because now what we are waiting for is then the new AI, the AI that can have a casual conversation with you, sounds realistic, you know, can answer responses locally. And that's what we're waiting for. At the moment, we're in kind of you know, an awkward situation where we've got old AI, new AI, and advancements in AI are happening really quickly. So I'd expect this year, 2024, to have a new version of Google Home that actually uses Google Bard, that actually, you know, can give you more in-depth responses. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's definitely more worth it. And I definitely say wait for that because, you know, we need more advanced AI systems in our home. Something that's not so dumb that it only understands commands that it's kind of being given. Whereas Google Bard can understand commands, it can make them into its own commands and you can, you know, use them and it works well. Whereas with something like that, it has to be fed the commands, it has to be told what commands could come up. So definitely do take into consideration that Google will without a doubt be releasing something, I reckon this year, to do with Google Bard that works with Google Assistant. Now, this is all happening on Google phones and, you know, in the Google suite, Google Bard is being integrated into everything because they want to compete with ChatGPT as much as possible. Now, Alexa itself has been exactly the same as Google. You know, there's not really been much advancements in AI. If anything, they've got worse. They've pushed more adverts onto their systems and the screen devices work and they work more consistently than Google. You just don't get that Google integra integration. You don't get the amazing app. You don't get the amazing Google search and you just don't get the seamlessness of everything, especially if you have a Google device and an Android device, in fact, to be honest, Everything works really well because you can ping it from your Google Assistant. You can also, you know, use commands on your phone, set up commands on your phone for Google. And it definitely works a lot better with Google than it does on Alexa. I never think Google Home for some people is still worth it, especially if you want a screen, you know, in your kitchen that you can ask it recipes and for things to read out to you. It definitely still works well there and those simple tasks, but more, you know, in-depth tasks where it has to, you know, think it has to go through different systems. Definitely it starts to struggle with. I still think the Google Home app has a lot of work to be done to it because today I was trying to set up someone else's Google Home with their phone and it just would refuse to turn on local local network scanning. Even though it was enabled in the iPhone settings, it just wouldn't work and I had to reset the Google Home three times, three times before I could actually set up the device. That's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. It should not be like that. Whereas with a HomePod, you set it up, you tap your phone and it's set up straight away. But there's definitely a lot to think about and I will leave a link in the description to be able to go buy a Google Home with a screen. I will also leave one in, in the description for a Nest and Mini because I definitely think that those are more worth it than the Nest hubs, without a doubt. So if you did enjoy this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. It's been Harry. I'm out. Peace.